All right, so you're here for Miracle Hour. Many of you are new to me. My team told me that like pretty much 80% of the people who signed up are new to me. So I'll let you know, I am a master certified life coach and coach trainer. I'm the author of two books. My most recent book is called Bear. It's all about loving the skin you're in. I am the creator of the University for Life Coach Training. So I have a, if you want to train to be a life coach, I've got you covered. Um, I've been married 27 years and I have two children. Cora is 20, Ryan is 22. I'm obsessed with Bridgerton, Beyonce, running, spinning, Peloton, but mostly helping you create what you want. This is my family, um, including some of my pets. And uh, this is, I mentioned my, my husband, Scott. You'll hear me call him the silver fox. Moses, the noisemaker. He's actually right now in the living room, gazing out of the front window like this lady. Can she please get a life? <laughs> Here's a little info about me, places I've been. Oprah Magazine, OU. Last year I delivered a TEDx talk. Um, Hallmark Home and Family. I get around y'all, but I'm not a rake like in Bridgerton. I'm not a rake. I commit. <laughs> All right, this is a distraction free zone. So I can't put a muzzle on Moses, but in your background, make sure that you're just giving yourself time to pay attention here. And get on into your Miracle Hour workbook. And again, if you don't have your workbook, that's okay. I'm going to guide you through this. All right. Um, this is what it looks like. And let's break it down together. So I did ask at the top of this broadcast to pick your miracle. So I want you to choose it. Choose your miracle. Somebody, I think it was Nellie, said to forgive herself. Type in the chat and also write down on your workbook, like what is it that you're working on? So if, if I could wave a magic wand and change one thing about your life, if you could change something, what would it be? And it could be anything. It could be anything. There's no judgment about what your miracle might be. It could be, um, Julie just said to be less stressed out. Catherine or Kate said to get her career back on track. Layla says wellness. Amy says build my business. Yes, Amy, I'm here for that. Contentment, get my fitness back. These are great. Keep them coming. Like what would feel like a miracle to you? Elizabeth says stop overeating. Casey says money. Hi, Casey Allen. One of my favorite miracle makers. Tommy says energy. Okay. All right. Write it down. Write it down. Karen says sustainable six-figure business. Karen, I see you. And I know you're signing up for on the six. Going to help you with that. I mean, it could be to feel passionate about your life and what you do again. It could be, you know, have more sex a la Bridgerton, like whatever, whatever. Chandra says, become a life coach. Yes. You know what? We're still enrolling for the university so we can hook you up. Self-esteem. The good news, Rosalind, about self-esteem is that is self-created. That is self-created. So you get to be totally in charge of that. And that's a miracle you can absolutely handle. Yes. What do y'all think you need? Let me go back to my slides. But I wanna know what it is you think you need. So for the miracle that you just chose, and remember, don't judge your miracles, okay? They're yours. What would feel like a miracle to you might not feel like a miracle to somebody else, and that's okay. Keep your eyes on your own paper. <laughs> But I want to help you make a plan. So what do you think in order to create that miracle? What do you think you need? 
So this is where humans get tripped up because when we ask the question, what do you need to create? Or like, what's the miracle you want to create? We tend to think miracles are things that just poof happen to us. And yes, I believe in magic. I do, but I'm in the business of creating miracles. And so what I know is that most of the miracles that we want, we wouldn't have the craving unless we were fully capable of creating it. And so we tend to think, oh, well, a miracle would be, you know, healing my relationship with money or you know, finding my soulmate or, you know, being pain-free or whatever it might be. And the great news is you're having that thought and that craving because you are fully designed to give that to yourself. We're not waiting on miracles around here. I'm just going to see what the chat says. Helen says, I need to collaborate with other people. All right, security, accountability. Yep, we're gonna get to accountability. Y'all are so smart. Beverly says, renew the passion of life is beautiful, healing. Right, like I do think it's important and we posted this on my Instagram yesterday is that there was a quote and I'm I'm just gonna give you the, the, the vibe of the quote like I'm going to misquote it, but it's basically like in our culture in particular, we tend to always be striving and we miss that we're right slap in the middle of what we wished for last year, five years ago. I have to remind myself of that constantly, like running this business, opening a life coach training university, having books published, um, all of those things are things I used to think were impossible or not just impossible, but they seemed outlandish. And now I'm in the middle of living that and I have other goals and dreams and cravings, which is totally healthy and normal. But I have to remind myself constantly, like you are living the dream you once had. And so that being said, the trick with miracle making is while you're making this plan, having immense gratitude for what you do have and what is going well, while also making a plan for something different, something more. Um, okay, Chandra's saying, I need a plan to make it happen. I can't see how I'll make it happen. I work full time and have two babies. First of all, congratulations on your two babies and your job. And there is always a way. There is always a way. Get my real estate license, build my network, avoid the negativity. Oh, avoid the negativity. Yes, because that is a drain to your plan. So we'll talk about squad here in a minute, but you want to make sure when you're making your plan that you're not allowing the naysayers or negative people to infect your energy. Um, oops, sorry, moving ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we're still on make your plan. All right, so on making your plan, I want you to keep it simple, but write the miracle that you said you wanted at the top. And then what are the small baby steps that you can take towards that miracle? Walk 30 minutes a day, unplug from social media one day a week, drink more water, wear fun lipstick. I saw a couple of y'all talking about my lipstick. Let me tell you about my lipstick. It's Charlotte Tilbury's, um, hang on. There's always time to talk about lipstick because. Bold lips create miracles. Oh, right. Walk of no shame. Walk of no shame. <laughs> Which we should have on t-shirts, shouldn't we? We should have walk of no shame. All right. So don't make your plan too long. Okay. We're looking for like tiny moves, tiny but significant moves. That lippy is otherworldly and has a great name. It's like, it's got like, uh, like almost like diamonds in it. 
Um, all right. What are your tiny moves going to be for creating this miracle? Nothing too complicated. Tiny moves. It could be like, you know, if you want to become a life coach, it's like research life coach schools. Um, you know, ask people where they've trained. Um, start budget, start a budget for tuition. Um, if you want to get control of your life again, um, I definitely would say we'll start with your miracle mindset eavesdropping on yourself and making sure that you're feeding your mind with mind fuel and not mind crack. High quality thinking and action over low quality thinking and action. Oh, people talking about my ring. <laughs> this was, um, my best friend is a jewelry designer and she made this. She has these for sale, studiofran.com. Okay, Tommy says my miracle is to have energy. So my little steps are eight glasses of water, two with lemon, open a window or step outside, complaint detox. Who complaint detox. That's a good one. You know, it's like, okay, if I'm going to create this miracle, I'm going to I'm going to do what's maybe like conscious complaining or venting, but I'm not going to I'm not going to get involved in venting. All right. Get a mentor and makeover coach. Awesome, Michelle. Request catalogs for the cars I'm considering versus relate to the purchase as a nice idea. Yeah, get those catalogs. Um, I can't tell, Kate. I can't tell. <laughs> Yes, Betsy says, go test drive. There is absolutely nothing like, so I have um, somebody, somebody that I know, they were sort of just thinking about buying a house someday. And I'm a former real estate agent. Uh, I have been in this business for 14 years, but my 22 year old is a realtor. Um, which by the way, if anyone needs an amazing realtor in Indiana, we got you covered. Um, and so this family friend wa was like, hey, of course I wanna use Ryan, but um, you know, maybe someday, maybe if we have another child, maybe, maybe, maybe. And um, both Ryan and I were like, well, I mean, the first step is really to get pre-qualified and see how much home you could potentially, you know, afford. And like, if you were going to buy a home, what kinds of things? I mean, they escalated from maybe someday to like, let's look in six hours and make an offer. <laughs> like, you know, and it's because they got on Zillow, they got pre approved. All of a sudden, it started becoming less of a pipe dream and becoming more real. And so, what Betsy is suggesting is accurate. Like if there's something concrete and tangible you can do to be in your miracle and get the info you need, then that's absolutely what you need to be doing. Okay. So making your plan, right? This is something obviously you're going to work some more on later, but the beginnings of your plan. And my advice with this is to give yourself specific tiny moves instead of uh, like uh, something that's too big is um, in terms of making a plan is write a book this weekend. Okay. That is not right. No, like it would be like, maybe consider the table of contents. You know, you got to break it down into bite size. Um, you know, you're not going to and I know that has been me previously. I'm like, I'm just going to knock this out. Okay, doesn't happen that way. Doesn't happen that way, nor does it happen when you say, um, if you have a health and fitness goal and you're like, I'm going to go to boot camp every day and I'm only going to eat, you know, some ridiculous amount of calories, like get that kind of diet mentality out, right? We're talking about sustainable miracle moves, sustainable miracle moves. Okay, 
I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. All right. So we talked about making your plan. You'll continue to work on that. But here's the part. Y'all all said accountability. Now, I have a lot to say about this because um, you've written down the one change that you want to make and you've started your plan, tiny moves for your plan. What I want you to think about is it gets more serious and real when you let people know what you're doing. So I want you to write down, like if I need to hear in the chat or see in the chat, like who's all in to really making their miracle happen. Like if you're just here to be entertained, that's fine. <laughs> but like, who's really serious about creating the miracle that you wrote down in the first part? Like who really wants to see this thing happen? Okay. Megan says, this is the part that terrifies me. Good. I call it scared sighted. Scared and excited at the same time is perfect energy for creating miracles. Okay. Okay. Yes, Nelly. Sonia Alar. Hello, beautiful. Okay, okay, okay. All in, all right. Keep going. Oh, Sally says I'm more serious than I have ever been before. Okay. Okay, good, y'all are serious. All right, so here's the thing. When you really wanna create change, one of my secrets, is to let them know, right? So I want you to write down three names of people you love. They could be family members, they could be friends, um, they could be um, colleagues, they could be women you recognize here from our Facebook groups. Who are, you could be me. Who are three people? Moses is letting me know his dream would be another can of cat food. <laughs> Laura says, even if they don't believe in me, that's a good point. Sometimes the people that you love aren't capable of holding the space for your big vision. So you do want to think about people who have earned the right to hear your dreams. And, and I'm being serious about that because there are people I love very, very much who just aren't capable of being a, a miracle collaborator. So you do have to think about that. I have people that want the best for me, but when I bring my big ideas to them, they're like, <gasps> like they all, all of a sudden start the negative Nelly stuff. <coughs> They all of a sudden start the like, have you thought about this? Have you, you know, what about this? Like, what if this happens? And um, some of my, like, one of my favorite humans in the whole world is my mama. But she is the person I tell when it's done. <laughs> okay. Like, she just, it's a lot of the time she gets too nervous and anxious on my behalf. Um, so yeah. Okay. Everybody's got their three. Great. Okay. So right now, it doesn't have to be right now during this, this webinar. Although if you want to get your smartphone out and text them, I give you a little sample in the workbook of what you could say, but basically it's like, hi friend. I've decided that 2021 is the year I'm getting serious about whatever my health. I'm feeling tired. I want to feel amazing. Here's my plan. Here's my request, right? Be specific. I need you to cheer me on, send me encouragement, help me stick to my plan. Here are some things you could do, right? Check in with me occasionally, come walking with me, send me podcast recommendations, or if nothing else, just send positive vibes. That totally counts. And this is more like email format. Thank you. Tell me one change that you want to make in 2021 and I can support you and I would love to help you. I'm here for you. Um, there's a template you can use in the worky bookie. 
So it's basically like I've decided 2021 is the year I'm going to fill in the blank because I want to feel. Type in the chat how you would feel if it were done, if your miracle was done. More at ease, elated, right? I picked out my word of the year a couple of years ago was delighted. And I was like, oh, I think it was 2019's word. Like, I'm going to feel delighted. Like, if it doesn't delight me, it's out, <laughs> right? And so you want to think about, like, how do you want to feel as a woman who creates this miracle? Proud. Okay. So I've decided that 2021 is the year I'm going to fill in the blank, write a book, get healthy, whatever. Because I want to feel, and my plan is this, and my request is this, yada, yada, yada. You get the gist of it. Three people. Now, I recognize that in the time of Corona, that maybe there are certain things that you want to do that you want help with that, you know, you're not able to be around people. And, and that's where online communities can be really, really helpful. And I have a couple of them. Bear Nation, Rich Coach Club, full of women ready to be accountability buddies. Um, okay. I often tell people the secret to most of my stuff getting done is because I tell everybody what my thing is. So when I had the idea to launch the University for Life Coach training, launching a university, that's a, that's a big endeavor. But I went straight to social media to tell people I was doing it. Why? It adds a layer of accountability. You know, I'm writing my next book. The book is actually done. I'm, I'm revising my book proposal to get a publisher is really more like it. But I talk about those things very publicly because it adds a layer of accountability. And, and I know many of y'all are like, well, what if it doesn't happen? Then I'm going to be embarrassed that I told everybody. Listen, a little bit of embarrassment is much more palatable than a whole lot of regret. So risk some embarrassment. It's okay. It's okay. Tell people. Get a squad assembled. Okay, so here's my next thing. Identify your obstacles. All right, so what do you imagine if you think about, okay, here's this amazing miracle I want to create. And here's the beginnings of my plan. And here are the people that I want to involve in my miracle making, my squad, when you're looking ahead at what you said you're gonna do, what do you think your biggest obstacles are gonna be? Sally says me. <laughs> Kate says my ADHD. Fear. People are already onto themselves. I'm my biggest obstacle. I need to get out of my own way. Get out of your own way, friends. Sonia says, feeling like I've always failed. Listen, I'm going to reach through this screen, Sonia Alar. You have accomplished so much. It's always the people who accomplish a lot that think they've accomplished nothing. <laughs> Someone saying, do you need to work that much? Um, yeah, the answer to that is apparently. Apparently. We need to have a whole class on clapbacks to the naysayers or people who get in the way. The, people actually don't get in our way. They don't. Our reaction to them gets in the way. Layla says, I have a bad case of who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, Layla? I'm being very serious when I ask that question. 
Because one of the things people love, other women and men and culture at large, love to do the, who does she think she is? We do it in our own heads. And so we must be able to answer that question. Who do we think we are? Who do you think you are? I'll tell you, you are a badass bitch about to make this miracle happen. That's who, that's who you are, right? You may not say it like that. You may not use salty language. But who are you? It might be something like, I'm just a woman trying to change my life. I'm just a woman who knows more is available. I'm just a woman who, fill in the blank, who are you? Who do you think you are, right? And so then when people say, oh, she's too big for her britches, be like, yep. Oh, she's full of herself. I am, I am full of self. What a beautiful thing to be, full of self. Um, that's my powerful booty. It cannot be contained. Who are you? Casey says, I'm the woman that just got you to talk about me. That's right. I know, Betsy, my family used to too. Don't get too big for your britches. Get too big for your damn britches. All right. Remember where you came from. I remember very clearly where I came from, but that's not where I'm going. Do not let other people get in your way, especially people who aren't capable of creating what you're about to create. My britches are spandex. <laughs> oh. Yes, you define you, right? So what? So mindset obviously is a big obstacle. Worrying about what other people will think and say is very common. It's very common because when you think about the conscious obstacles, right? The 5% of your brain is con conscious thinking. Cora Hyatt's trying to FaceTime me. Should I answer um, on the webinar? I don't think so. Hang on, let me see. Hey, so you're live on a webinar. Good morning, girly pops. <laughs> she just called y'all girly pops. I'm trying to teach people about miracles. What do you have to say? Um, nothing relevant to the conversation. That's for that's for now. Are you calling? Are you calling for money? Um, I was calling to tell you about the cake I'm gonna bake. Oh, you're gonna bake a cake. I am. This is where she differs from her mother. Yeah, I'm a talented baker. Susan, however, is not. Okay, now she, yep, she's making money as a poet. Your fans are on this webinar. Yeah, tell them to buy my chat book. I know some of them didn't. <laughs> she's calling all y'all out who didn't buy her poetry book. All right, I got to go teach miracles. I'll call you back. Ciao. Bye. I would like the miracle. Stop trash talking your mother and maybe we'll buy. For those of you who didn't know, my 20 year old daughter is a poet and she also trolled me on TikTok. So if you wanna worry about what people think when your own children are trolling you on social media, you know you've developed thick skin. Um, so what we have this 5% of our conscious brain that we can eavesdrop on and pivot from low quality thinking to high quality thinking, right? But there's all this subconscious stuff going on and rules that we've learned from family of origin, culture at large, um, peer groups, all those things, all that programming that's just running in the background about, you know, maybe in your family, um, people didn't go into business for themselves. Or maybe in your family, um, people who had money were bad people. Or maybe in your family, there's this unspoken rule that you just don't make any waves or say what you think. There's all kinds of things like that at play that can be an obstacle.
And so it's just important to recognize, okay, why do I have so much resistance to doing this thing? You know, where did I get some of these messages? And what's a new rule? What's a new way of thinking and being that I can try to embody? So I digress. So, you know, your biggest obstacle is usually thinking conscious or subconscious, but then there's also stuff like getting distracted too easily or, or believing that you don't have enough time. You know, there was somebody really early on, maybe it was Chandra who said, I work full time and I have two babies. And so there's, when you look at, okay, one of my obstacles might be getting creative with childcare and carving out time, you know, like we're not going to deny the reality of a full-time job and two babies, but what we can do is try to problem solve and come up with high quality thoughts and solutions to that. So, you know, maybe your, your habit is to procrastinate or your habit is to um, overestimate what you can take on. Um, and so then you get burnt out and fizzle out. Like, what do you think your obstacles are going to be? We already know from some of you, it's what other people have think. Um, but write that down. Casey says, breaking projects apart into smaller tasks that I can handle between COVID naps, right? Casey is recovering from COVID. So one of her obstacles obviously is going to be figuring out energy levels while she recovers and being able to do things that are manageable while she's recovering. Um, hmm, what do you think? What do you think your biggest obstacles are going to be? It's important to identify them because then when they start to pop up, you can go, oh, there's that thing where I worry about what everybody at work's going to say. Oh, there's that thing where I said after work, I was going to go for a walk and I'm turning on Netflix. I'm turning on Bridgerton instead of doing what I said I was going to do. Amy says, keeping myself motivated when I'm not seeing my progress yet. Keeping a positive mindset. Okay, so if you've identified some of those lack of focus, um, Sonia says being a past dweller instead of believing in a better future. That's right, Sonia, future focused. Right, you can forgive yourself, you cannot make someone forgive you. Give that forgiveness to yourself. Lack of motivation, unfocused. Okay. So then what's one way you can remove this obstacle or work on this obstacle? One way. One way. Cora Hyatt, baking a cake. I'm so happy one of my children knows how to cook and bake. <laughs> I am the worst baker in the world. The worst. Um, but it's also not a goal of mine to become a good baker. So <laughs> I don't have to have a positive mindset about it. Uh, create a realistic schedule routine, research, solicit help. set themes for the day, trust that my work is paying off behind the scenes, even if I don't see any results yet. So I, I always, if, if you're planting lots of seeds, I always say to entrepreneurs, like, don't walk away from the farm before those seeds have a chance to sprout and show you visible signs of life above the soil. And it's really being able, and this is for any miracle, not just for entrepreneurs, but really being able to hold the space for yourself while things are germinating and growing. Do not walk away from that farm. There's so much happening below the surface. Um, make task lists, walk away from negative conversations, yes. And, and one way you can do that is you can attempt to change the conversation. You can simply remove yourself from the conversation. Um, you know, I have um, 
a family member who can be negative and and I just say like are you just going to be negative in this conversation the whole time because if so I got to go <laughs> like I've gotten super blunt about it like I just don't I want to be of support to people but I also am not going to get sucked in it's too important it's too important to to create miracles okay I'm going to go back to sharing my screen we're identifying obstacles we're building commitment, right? So what we're going to do is say like, okay, if you're going to build commitment, how can you, when you think about the obstacles you might have and what you can do to blast through those obstacles, um, how can you make this whole thing pleasurable for yourself? One way is to think about this like it's an adventure. Okay, this miracle making business is a freaking adventure, right? And like make it super pleasurable for yourself. So whether that means, you know, sprucing up your workspace or, you know, I have, um, I lovingly refer to it as the Brady Bunch Health and Wellness Center in my basement. <laughs> this house was built in the 20s and the, the basement most everything else has been um, renovated on the first and second floor. But the basement in like the 60s, early 70s, they put up some paneling and they put a bar in. They've got a trophy case. This is so throwback, this Brady Bunch basement. It used to be the kids' playroom and all those things. Now that we're empty nesters, I have my workout equipment down there. And actually all the box swag I send y'all comes, I pack it up in that basement. Anyway, um, right? Like when I wanted, I was not interested in spending a ton of money renovating that basement, but what I did do was make it as nice as it could be. I cleaned it out. Um, I got my equipment down there. I put up some gym mirrors off Amazon, you know, so it's like, what can you do to make this goal and the working through your obstacles more pleasurable, right? So it's not just about, and it shouldn't be about white knuckling it till it happens. It's like, let me, let me approach this with a spirit of adventure and make it as amazing as possible. So if it's, hey, I want to write my first book, then make sure that you're taking care of the author and that you're making it a beautiful experience all the way through. Like, what can you do to make it better? Um, you know, for people, I saw a bunch of people who have health and fitness goals on here. Um, you know, you can bribe yourself with some fitness wear that feels amazing to put on, you know, or getting an exercise buddy to do it with you, like really think about how can I build commitment by making this better for myself? Um, Julie says, get help with housework kids and go have fun with my friends once a month. I love that plan. I love that plan. Sonia says, light a lot of candles, put on the twinkly lights in my office, start being grateful there's time to write. Totally, and like really think about, when you think about creating miracles, it is a miracle we're here on Zoom together. It is a miracle that we get to sit down and spend time brainstorming what we can do to make this amazing for ourselves. Um, and, the, and the last thing to really help you build commitment and keep going is give miracles to get miracles. You know, be a day maker. Who can you help along this journey? So, you know, create a miracle for somebody else. That actually is part of the reason why, um, there are many reasons why, but one of the reasons why I am able to do what I do is because I spend a lot of time helping other people do the same thing, right? So it's like, who am I going to help today, right? I'm showing up. I'm going to help all y'all. Um, that motivates me to work on my thing. So being a day maker, being a miracle maker, being like, you know what? 
I just noticed that there's a scholarship program for this. I'm going to send this to my friend. Her kid could qualify for that. Or I'm going to send flowers to her. She seems like she's been down. Um, Annie, we will post the link again for the workbook here in the comments. Thank you, Mallory. Um, but it's studies actually show proof that one of the best mood boosters around is to random acts of kindness, um, being a day maker, doing things for others. Um, there is a good endorphin flood in your body that happens when you do things like that, unless you're a sociopath. <laughs> Unless you're a psychopath, it's not going to work for you, um, which I know no one showing up for Miracle Hour is, is in that category, but like making a donation, nominating a colleague for an award, um, you know, like I am constantly thinking and searching for ways to make somebody's day. I really am. Um, Amy says, guess it won't work for me. But right, really, if you want to be in the business of making miracles for yourself, help other people. Give miracles to get miracles. Think about what you can do. So what are we going to do? I mean, it can be really tiny and simple. It could be a text to somebody to make their day. Um, it could be finding a home for, oh my gosh, I adopted a beagle named Mork the beagle he's a rescue beagle and now i'm obsessed with pairing all these rescue animals with people <laughs> so i'm like here's the perfect cat for you um but right karen says open the door for moms with kids free simple day maker right sherry says my sister-in-law i'm so sorry was diagnosed with cancer i sent her a box of gifts she looked forward to these gifts she cried amazing Send encouraging postcards to friends. I got a, what I do with it? I got one of the most touching cards in the mail the other day. And it really made my day because I could tell from the way the, the sender wrote it that she really saw me. Like she really recognized, you know, like, hey, I see how hard you're pivoting. I see all the things you're doing. Like, I just want you to know I really appreciate you. And I was like, oh, day made. Um, so awesome. I'm trying to think of, somebody's trying to think of ideas for her parents. You could do food delivery. You could get somebody to clean up their yard. Um, that costs money, but. Okay, so let's go back to the screens because I wanna tell you about, um, the prize and also what you can be available for. So if you've enjoyed Miracle Hour, some of you were part of Miracle Week, we now have an extended program called Miracle Year that I would love to tell you about because the power really is already inside of you, but doing it in community unlocks it so much faster. So Miracle Year is something that I put together to bring women together in community to watch these miracles happen for one another. A rising tide lifts all boats. And here's what you get. Look at that cute tea set. And then I'm going to tell you about the Bridgerton tie-in here. And we're going to draw a winner for the Fortnum and Mason gift pack. Okay. Um, so what's included is live classes with me. There are seven classes over seven weeks. Um, I'm going to give you weekly challenges. So again, I bribe people to do things for themselves. But so every week I'm teaching fresh new content that I've never taught before, issuing a fresh challenge for the week and giving away great prizes each week. You also will get access to our Miracle Year Facebook group. It's already open. Women are already chatting it up with each other. Also, I know some of y'all already have this, but I have to show you. 
the first 100 registrants get my special It's Go Time Planner. So you can plan your miracles. We will ship that to you. It's a $65 planner. It's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So that's like the sign up prize. Here's the fast action bonus. So those of you who are on this, who are already signed up for Miracle Year, you of course get this because you've already signed up. But when you enroll by Wednesday, you get a seat at the party of the season and a special surprise from me. So yes, we are going to have a Bridgerton tea party. And yes, I'm going to mail you some stuff. So also, can we go back and admire the, the queen for a second? Who wants to have tea? I mean, it's going to be so fun. And I am absolutely getting a Bridgerton dress made, but it's not going to be one of the little chippy gowns. It's going to be queenly or Lady Danbury like. So if you want to come to my <laughs> themed tea that's just for you, you're going to want to sign up. So tell me who's having tea with me right now. Yes, I'm having tea with Susan. Um, so here's how you register. If you go to this link, and I think Mallory's probably putting it in the chat, um, we will have tea on February 3rd. Uh, or is it February 3rd? You have to sign up by February 3rd. And the tea is on the 10th, I think. Um, but classes start on Monday the 15th. Talk about self-care and love. Right there in the middle of February, we start. Um, that's what it looks like. That's what the sales page looks like. And then you can pick which way you want to go. If you want, there are two different packages. One is, um, $4.97. And then if you want one-on-one -on -one co coaching with me, we have a VIP package that's available. So you just fill in your name and your payment info. You can pick a payment plan and you're in. And then we will send you all the goodies. This is what it looks like after you submit your name and payment and you're successfully enrolled. Um, so then, <laughs> so then you're gonna be a miracle maker.